So Microsoft has just announced a new open source project. It's got a permissive open source license. It's written in Rust, which means you get all the advantages of Rust, memory safety compared to C or C++. It also builds, and there are binaries available for it, and you can build it yourself on Windows and on Linux. Now, what I'm talking about is a program called Edit. It's a text editor for the command line with a text-based uh, user interface. And it's very similar to Microsoft Edit that came out for MS-DOS about, I think it's like 30 Four thirty-five years ago. This, of course, is a modern version of it. As I said, written in Rust, open source. And in this video, I want to show you how to use it. I think you'll find it's actually a pleasure to use and certainly is a good alternative to Vim or to Nano or to whatever other text editor you might be using. And then I want to show you how you can build it because it's fully open source. You can build it yourself and show you how to do that as well. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so here we are in the text editor, starting up with a blank file. At the top, we have a menu bar. We're we'll going to that in a minute. At the bottom, there's a status bar. And then of course, here is where you do your typing. There are line numbers there on the left-hand side. Now I'm gonna load up a text file so that we can play with some text uh, without me having to type it all in. Okay, so here I am. This is the readme file, in fact, for the uh, edit program. It's uh, in Markdown now, as I say, it's, you know, it's an editor, so you, you can edit things as you'd expect. Now, when you want to do um, things with blocks of text, you can actually highlight it. So you press Shift and then use the arrow keys and you can, you know, just as you'd expect even from a, a Windows program. So, you know, for example, I can delete all of that lot, just hit Backspace now, Control-Z to undo it, Control-X to cut, Control V to paste, I can paste it again, and so on. So very, very similar to what you're used to, but inside of a text editor, inside of a text user interface rather than a Windows user interface. So what about the menu bar then? Well, that's activated, as you can see, at the under the F, there's a little line, under the E, there's a little line, under the V, there's a little line, and so on. So you press Alt-F to get up that menu, and then you can go left and right, or you know Alt-V will bring up the view menu. So let's just go through those. New file, open file, save, save as, close file, exit, everything you'd expect there. Edit, undo, redo, cut, paste, find and replace, uh, and, and select all. So those are really, really easy to use. And then Alt for view, go to a file. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Go to a particular line number. So let's here go to line 21. So it goes straight down there to, to line 21. Uh, and you can turn word wrap on or off. And then find if you go to about, it just gives you a little dialogue box saying this is Microsoft Edit. Okay, so what else is interesting here is that uh, if you go down to Alt, uh, v and then focus status bar here you can change the encoding so is it control uh, carriage return line feed or just line feed you can change the encoding to utf8 to something else tabs and spaces that's you know how you want to do your things like that and so on so it also has tabs let's go to um, alt f open a file and then we're just going to scroll down here and there's another file here, contributing.md. So here's the second file. Now you notice down here in the left hand, bottom left hand corner, it says contributing.md markdown plus one. So if we press now uh, control P, it actually shows us the different files we've got open. So we can go back to the readme file, control P, go back to the contributing file and you can have multiple buffers open and you can switch between them. And one other really great thing is that the mouse is supported. So I've been doing all of that with the keyboard, which you might want to do sometimes. But look at this, I can actually go up here and click with the mouse. Okay, I can click here, view, go to file, select the file. Okay, I can do selecting using the mouse. Okay, I can do this. So absolutely brilliant. So foot, double click on a word to get the word, triple click to get the whole line selected. So this is absolutely brilliant. So I've actually got mouse support. Even the mouse wheel allows me to scroll up and down. And this is all inside of a text yeah, user interface. So really, really fully functional. Okay, now this one is actually running on a Raspberry Pi. So it's an ARM 64 bit chip running Linux. Uh, I can do control Q. And there you can see I'm here on a Raspberry Pi. Now I'm going to show you how you can build it. On a Raspberry Pi, it's the same for any Linux distribution. You can actually do the same on Windows. This is available for Windows and for Linux. X8664 uh, and 64-bit ARM out of the box. And it uses Rust. Okay, so here is the GitHub web page. And if you scroll down here, it tells you a little bit about it. But then here it tells you how to install it. Build instructions, install Rust, install the nightly build and then use this command. Okay, so that's what we need 
to do. So I'm going to cut and paste that and then go back to the command line. Okay, so here I am on the command line of my Raspberry Pi 5. Here is where I have cloned the GitHub library and we need to use that command that we cut and paste from uh, the instructions. So we need to run that and it will go ahead and just do all of the stuff that Cargo does, building the Rust. And once it's done, you'll have the executable, which I then copied to uh, slash user slash local slash bin. You can use it however you want, but it's that simple. Open source Rust, available for Windows and for Linux. Supports mouse uh, and it's fully featured. Fantastic. Okay, so there you have it. Microsoft's new open source Rust uh, based uh, editor. Love to hear your thoughts about it as an editor, as about the choice of Rust, about whether you've managed to build it yourself, all of that aspect. So I'd love to hear your thoughts about that in the comments below. I really do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, then why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Also, please do check out my Patreon page. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.